get ready for a jaw-dropping video that uncovers some shocking stories about famous individuals who met their unfortunate demise in unexpected animal encounters. From legendary adventurers to movie stars, you won't believe the unbelievable incidents that took their lives. Join me as we delve into these tragic tales and explore the untamed side of the animal kingdom. Let's talk about Taylor Mitchell, shall we? Taylor Mitchell was a talented singer-songwriter who was born on October 27, 1990 in Toronto, Canada. She was making waves in the music industry with her folk and acoustic sound. She captured the hearts of many with her soulful voice and heartfelt lyrics. She released her debut album, For Your Consideration, in 2009, which received critical acclaim and showcased her talent as a singer and songwriter. It looked like she was just a step away from stardom. Tragically, Taylor's promising career would be cut short. Having some free time before her next concert, Mitchell, an environmentalist who enjoyed nature walks, went to Cape Breton Highlands National Park on the sunny afternoon of October 27, 2009. Imagine this, a peaceful visit to the national park turned into a terrifying encounter. While hiking, she was unexpectedly attacked by a coyote. Sadly, Mitchell lost her life due to the severity of the attack and subsequent blood loss. What made this incident even more shocking was that it was the first recorded case of an adult being killed by coyotes. This event left experts scratching their heads as coyotes were believed to be cautious and wary of humans. Jacques Jackie Boxberger, the legendary track and field athlete from France who left his mark on the world of long distance races. Representing France at the 1968, 1972, 1976, and 1984 Summer Olympics, Boxberger showcased his incredible talent and determination. His achievements were not limited to just Olympic appearances. He clinched victory at the Paris Marathon in both 1983 and 1985, solidifying his status as one of the best in the field. In 1972, he secured the 1,500-meter title at the European Athletics Indoor Championships. And even after years of competing at such a high level, Boxberger continued to push himself. In 1987, he triumphed at the Marrakesh Marathon. But unfortunately, life would have an unfortunate fate in store for Jackie. In a tragic incident that took place in 2001, Boxberger's vacation turned into a horrifying nightmare during his family trip to Kenya. While attempting to film an elephant on a safari, the unexpected happened. The massive animal grabbed him with its trunk, flung him against a tree, and tragically trampled him to death. Horrified onlookers ran for their lives. Timothy Treadwell was an American environmentalist and bear enthusiast who dedicated his life to studying and living among grizzly bears. Born on April 29, 1957 in Long Island, New York, Treadwell developed a deep passion for wildlife from a young age. Treadwell's career can be described as unconventional and adventurous. In the late 1980s, he ventured into the remote wilderness of Alaska's Katmai National Park to observe and document the behavior of grizzly bears. Over the course of his career, he spent a total of 13 summers in close proximity to these magnificent creatures. Treadwell's approach to studying bears was unique. He would establish temporary camps within their habitat and live alongside them for months at a time. Through his observations, he sought to dispel negative stereotypes about grizzly bears while also advocating for their protection. In addition to his field work, Treadwell became known for his public speaking engagements and appearances on television programs such as Late Show with David Letterman and The Rosie O'Donnell Show. He used these platforms to raise awareness about bear conservation issues and promote understanding between humans and wildlife. Tragically, Timothy Treadwell's life came to an untimely end in October 2003. In October 2003, Treadwell and his girlfriend, physician assistant Amy Huguenard, visited Katmai National Park which is on the Alaska Peninsula across Shelikoff Strait from Kodiak Island. Treadwell set his campsite near a salmon stream where wild bears commonly feed in autumn. Treadwell was in the park later in the year than normal, at a time when bears attempt to gain as much fat as possible before winter. Food was scarce that autumn, causing the bears to be even more aggressive than usual. 
Treadwell and Huguenard were to leave the park at his usual time of year and had actually returned to Kodiak on September 26th to store their gear for the season and catch a connecting flight to return to their home in California. After an argument with the airline ticketer over the price of altering his return ticket, Treadwell and Huguenard made the decision to return to their campsite on September 29th for an additional week. The bears he had been used to during the summer had already gone into torpor, and bears that Treadwell did not know from other parts of the park were moving into the area. Some of the last footage taken by Treadwell, hours before his death, includes video of a bear diving into the river repeatedly for a piece of dead salmon. Treadwell mentioned in the footage that he did not feel entirely comfortable around that particular bear. Around noon on Sunday, October 5, 2003, Treadwell spoke with an associate in Malibu, California, by satellite phone. Treadwell mentioned no problems with any bears. The next day, October 6th, Willie Fulton, a Kodiak air taxi pilot, arrived at Treadwell and Huguenard's campsite to pick them up but found the area abandoned, except for a bear, and contacted the local park rangers. The couple's mangled remains were discovered quickly upon investigation. Treadwell's disfigured head, partial spine, and right forearm and hand, with his wristwatch still on, were recovered a short distance from the camp. Huguenard's partial remains were found next to the torn and collapsed tents partially buried in a mound of twigs and soil. A large male bear protecting the campsite was assumed to be the culprit and was shot by park rangers during their attempt to retrieve the bodies. Diane Whipple was an accomplished athlete who excelled in the sport of lacrosse. Diane Whipple gained recognition for her exceptional skills and dedication to the game. She played as a midfielder and was known for her speed, agility, and strategic play on the field. Her talent and passion for lacrosse earned her numerous accolades throughout her career. Whipple's achievements extended beyond the field as well. She became an influential figure in promoting women's sports. Her dedication to empowering female athletes inspired many young girls to pursue their dreams in sports. Tragically, Diane Whipple's life was cut short at the age of 33. Five days before her 34th birthday, Whipple returned from a grocery store run to her home. There, in the hallway outside her apartment, she was attacked by a massive Presa Canario named Bane. A Presa Canario is a large Mastiff-type dog. Bane weighed close to 130 pounds. Whipple weighed just 110. A neighbor who heard Whipple's screams called 911. By the time police arrived, there was little that could be done. The dog's powerful jaws had punctured her throat and left almost 80 bite marks on her body. A medical examiner would later say the only parts of Whipple's body that were spared were the top of her head and the soles of her feet. Marjorie Noller, a former attorney who was in care of the dog, was convicted of second degree murder in the dog mauling death of Whipple in 2001. Let's talk about John Pickard. Born in 1913, John Pickard began his acting journey in the early days of television and made a name for himself through his exceptional performances. He appeared in numerous television shows and films. One of John Pickard's notable roles was in the popular TV series Boots and Saddles, where he portrayed Captain Shank Adams, his portrayal of the character captivated audiences and solidified his place as a talented actor. In addition to television, John Pickard also made appearances on the big screen. He starred in films such as The Gunfighter and The Steel Helmet, further showcasing his acting prowess. On that fateful day of August 4, 1993, John Pickard had an unexpected encounter with a rather unruly member of his family farm, a large bull. Unfortunately, while trying to cross the field at the family farm, he found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time and ended up being run down and trampled by the mighty beast. He was 80 years old at the time of his untimely demise. Surinder Singh Bajwa was a prominent figure in Delhi's political landscape, serving as the deputy mayor of the city. He assumed office in April of 2007 bringing with him a wealth of experience and a commitment to serving the public. Tragically, Surinder Singh Bajwa's time in office was cut short later that same year. Unfortunately, he met a tragic fate. On October 20th, 2007, 
Bajwa was attacked by a group of monkeys at his home. Yes, you heard that right. He was attacked by a group of monkeys. In an attempt to escape the attack, he and several monkeys fell from a first floor balcony. He suffered serious head injuries in the fall. And despite receiving medical attention, Bajwa succumbed to his injuries the following day. Steve Irwin, the beloved host of the Crocodile Hunter, captured the hearts of millions with his daring encounters with crocodiles and other wild animals. The nature documentary series became a massive hit, leading to numerous spin-off series and even a feature-length film. However, tragedy struck on September 4th, 2006, while Irwin was filming an underwater documentary called Ocean's Deadliest. In a shocking turn of events, he was fatally pierced in the chest by a short tail stingray. The stingray's barb penetrated his thoracic wall and heart, causing massive trauma. Despite immediate medical attention, Irwin was pronounced dead shortly after the incident. The world mourned the loss of this charismatic conservationist and wildlife enthusiast. His passion for educating people about wildlife conservation continues to inspire generations. The Steve Irwin's legacy lives on through his family's dedication to wildlife preservation and their ongoing efforts at Australia Zoo.